This video attempts to answer the question, what have the Normans ever done for us? The Norman kings reigned from 1066 to 1154 and immediately set about the construction of Norwich Castle, initially clearing at least 98 houses and building a giant mound with a wooden fort, with the stone construction starting in 1094. The mound was made higher and the ditch deeper, with the castle being designed as a palace rather than a fortification, although the only king to stay there was Henry I at Christmas 1121. From as early as 1220 the castle was used as a prison until the 1880s after which it was converted into a museum. The Norman castle and its mound have shaped the area ever since, with Castle Meadow, although higher than the original ditch, following a route around the castle. Follow the bridge up to the castle and we can see that the Normans unwittingly gave future residents of the city splendid elevated views of the surrounding area. Having cleared much of the old town to build the castle and as we shall see the cathedral, the Normans set about creating effectively a new town to the west of the castle. The Anglo-Saxon marketplace at Tombland was relocated to a new space near the castle, at least partly so that the Normans could keep an eye on what was going on. The market was operated under license from the king until 1341 when the city took it over. Following the Normans' relocation of the market to this space, it has been in operation as a major trading hub for nearly a thousand years. For all this time the market has been overlooked by St Peter Mancroft Church, the current building dating from the 15th century incorporating an earlier one built in 1075, one of three churches built at the time to service this new town. A plaque on the city hall gives a few more details of the new town and the two other churches in the immediate area, originally built after the Norman Conquest, were St Giles and St Stephen's, St Giles being referred to in the Doomsday Book of 1086, with both churches used as county courts in the Norman era. Both were subsequently rebuilt to what we see today. So we move on to the cathedral, seen here over the rooftops from the castle mound. Lost in this area as a result of this Norman development were a Saxon settlement and two churches. St Ethelbert's was believed to be here in the Upper Close and St Michael's here in Tombland, with a number of skeletons from the Anglo-Saxon period discovered in Tombland's recent revamp. Foundations for Norwich Cathedral were dug out of what would become Lollard's Pit, a site where people would be burned for their religious beliefs in the 15th and 16th centuries. To build the cathedral, stone was brought from Caen in France to this point, now Paul's Ferry, and along a canal, the route of which is followed by the present day Lower Close. The Normans started building the cathedral in 1096 under the direction of Bishop Herbert de Lozinga who had been invited to England from Normandy by King William II. The floor plan remains as it was during Norman times, other than the most easterly chapel. The present stone spire, replacing an earlier wooden one which had been struck by lightning, was added in 1480. So, apart from the cathedral and the castle and the marketplace, what else have the Normans done for us? Well, if we go into King Street, this is the Music House, the only 12th century secular building in Norwich. This facade dates to the 17th century, with the left-hand gable concealing the remains of the original house. Part of the buildings form Journey's Bar, although this has been shut since the beginning of the pandemic. Just off King Street, St Julian's Church is one of about 25 mentioned in the Doomsday Book. Its origins predate the Norman Conquest, but significant building was carried out during the Norman period. It was hit during the Second World War and rebuilt using its original materials. From the castle to the cathedral, and with much more besides, it's clear that the Normans have had a lasting impact in shaping the city of Norwich.